Welcome my dear friends. Today we are going to learn about stress in aquaculture and its role in disease development. Prior to learning the disease development process, we must know how these disease event occurs within a system. The disease event occurs within a system if there is an improper balance between the environment, the pathogen and the host. Of course, within an aqua farm, the host is fish, the pathogen that lives under the water and environment that is water and soil parameters. When this imbalance occurs, it leads to a disease outbreak within a fish when fish get immunocompromised. Under this topic, we are going to learn about the stress and its response, the factors associated with stress and their role in the disease development. Friends, all of you are very much friendly about this term stress, but what is stress? The word stress and its concept in common use is generally associated with a system that is severely challenged and often get fatigued. So stress is the physiological, biochemical and behavioral response to a stimulus in an attempt to adapt that stimulus. So stress has been defined by different authors time to time differently. According to Selye 1950, he described stress as the sum of physiological responses by which an animal tries to maintain or establish a normal metabolism on the face of physical or any chemical force. Later on, it was more elaborated by the Brit in 1958 when he defined about stress is that it is a state produced by an environmental or other factor which extends the adaptive response of an animal beyond the normal functioning to such an extent that in either case the chances of survival are significantly reduced. After a decade, Barton in 1997, he defined stress in a cellular level. He defined stress as a response of the cell or organism itself to any demand placed on it such that it causes an extension of a physiological state beyond the normal resting state. Now, what is stress response? So stress is an unavoidable component of fish farming and its possible detrimental effects on important fish performance features such as metabolism and growth, disease resistance and reproductive capacity. So stress response can be defined as the sum of the physiological changes that occur if fish reacts to physical, chemical, biological or any perceived challenges and attempts to compensate that. So the stress response is intended to be adaptive in nature. So stress by itself is not a bad thing. And any factor which causes fish to depart from a state of optimal functions is a stressor or stress factor. Stress can be either acute or chronic in nature. A stressor that induces a fight or flight reaction is considered as acute stressor, while others are chronic stressors. So the stress response in fees has been broadly categorized into primary response, secondary response 
and tertiary response. These physiological responses are termed as general adaptive syndrome that is also called shortly as gas. So, it consists of an alarming reaction in which stress hormones, catecholamines and corticosteroids are released. The second stage or the secondary response is a stage of resistance during which adaptation occurs and the tertiary response is it is the stage of exhaustion in which adaptation is lost because of stress was too severe and too long. Friends, when fish are exposed to a stressor or stressful event, the stress response is initiated by the perception of a real or perceived threat by CNS. The response of hypothalamic pituitary intrarenal axis begins with the release of corticotropin releasing hormones or corticotropin releasing factors chiefly from hypothalamus. Corticotropic releasing factor stimulates the corticotropic cells of the adenohypophysis and secrete ACTH. Circulating ACTH stimulates the entorenal tissues to synthesize and release corticosteroids mainly cortisol into the blood circulation. Concurrently with the elevation of circulating corticosteroids during stress is the release of catecholamines that is epinephrine and norepinephrine. Following sympathetic stimulation of the chromaffin tissue in the kidney other hormones including thyroxine, somatolactin, conedotropins and reproductive steroids in circulation and serotonin and its derivatives in the brain can become either elevated or suppressed during the stressed state. Now we will slowly understand what is the primary stress response, what is the secondary and what is the tertiary stress response and how these physiological event occurs. So in primary stress response, it is generally a neuroendocrine response where stress hormones are released after perceived danger or stressors by the chemoreceptors of aquatic species that is catecholamines or cortisol. Release of ACTH from the adenohypophysis, release of stress hormone like catecholamines and corticosteroids from the head kidney, in fish an adverse condition stimulates the afferent neural pathway that runs in the sympathetic nervous system from the hypothalamus to the chromaffin tissue of the head kidney and stimulates the chromaffin tissue which results release of catecholamines. Corticotropic releasing hormone released from hypothalamus stimulates corticotropic cells of adenohypophysis to secrete ACTH, which stimulates intrarenal cells to synthesize and release corticosteroids, that is, particularly cortisol. Resting an unstressed level of circulating level, corticosteroids in fish are supposed to be less than 30 to 40 nanogram per ml, which was given by the Wedmeyer et al. in 1990. Later on Barton and Ibama in 1991, they have de they fixed that the characteristic corti cortisol elevation in feces in response to acute stressors tends to range within about 30 to 300 nanogram per ml of blood. Elevation of plasma catecholamines and cortisol due to primary stress leads to secondary stress response. So we come to know that in primary stress response, it is generally a neuroendocrine response where stress hormones are released after perceiving the danger or a stressor. Now we will talk about the secondary stress response. The stress hormone activate a number of metabolic pathways that result in alteration in the blood chemistry and hematology. The measurement of plasma glucose concentration 
has been used as an indicator of stressed state. In teleosteosis, cortisol enters into the liver cells where it binds to a nuclear receptor resulting in activation of genes that produce a series of enzymes that have a range of metabolic effects. This results in a suite of biochemical and physiological changes which may include hyperglycemia, hyperlactisemia, depletion of tissue glycosone reserves, lipolysis and inhibition of protein synthesis. Other changes may include the osmotic and ionic imbalances. That means the, the sodium and chlorine retention and the potassium ion excreted which leads to diuresis and loss of electrolyte from the blood and change in hematology. The stress hormone like adrenaline and noradrenaline or so called epinephrine or norepinephrine shown to increase plasma glucose production in fish by both gluconeogenesis and glycogenolysis. Catecholamines in particularly have marked influence on cardiovascular functions leading to change in blood circulation, gill perfusion and oxygen carrying capacity of blood. Now corticosteroids on the other hand are known to stimulate the ion transport mechanism in the gill and the kidney. These secondary stress response are believed to be adaptive mechanism and are particularly important for fish to recover from stress by maintaining oxygen supply to the tissue to regain osmotic and ionic equilibrium. Exposure of cell or whole organisms to heat shock results in a reversible increase in the synthesis of some acute phase proteins again subsequent shock known as HSPs which plays an important role in homeostasis. HSPs are a family of highly conserved cellular proteins which are essential for folding and translocation of newly formed proteins and renaturation of denatured proteins. Now the expression of these proteins increase manifold in the cells during stress. Later on the feces enters into the tertiary stress response. The chronic stress or the chronic exposure to a stressor provokes tertiary stress response that results in a number of pathological change. This response represents whole animal and population level changes associated with stress including reduction in reproduct reproductive stress success, impaired growth rate and decreased disease resistance. This might be stress mediated, energy repartitioning and diverts energy substrates away from the vital life process in order to cope up with the enhanced energy demand associated with stress. Now we, we will discuss about the factors that are associated with the stress. As we have discussed earlier that any factor which causes fish to depart from a state of optimal function is a stressor or stress factor. So what are these stressor or what are these factors? These stressor can be classified into four general categories that is the physical, chemical, biological and procedural. The physical stressor include the temperature, turbidity, light, salinity, sound and etc. The chemical stressor may be the low dissolved oxygen, the high carbon dioxide content in water, the pH, the heavy metal composition, the water pollution and other metabolic waste produced by other organisms. The biological stressor may be due to the higher stocking density, the uh, availability of predators, presence of parasites or pathogens or other malinfection among any aquatic animals. And the fourth one, the procedural is the due to it may cause due to the handling stress, due to the hauling stress, due to the st stocking stress or the stress caused uh, during disease treatment and other manual operations. Now, how these stress involve with the involve in the disease development process? So first we learn that mucus. Any stress causes chemical changes in mucus which decrease its effectiveness 
as a chemical barrier against invading pathogens. Scales and skins are the most commonly damaged because of handling, handling stress and opens a window for the opportunist pathogens. Stress upsets the normal electrolyte that is the sodium, potassium and chloride balance leads to diuresis, results in excessive uptake, uptake of water in freshwater fish and dehydration in marine water fish. Chronic stressor leads to hormonal changes due to decreases the effectiveness of an inflammatory response. The prolonged stress severely limits the proper immune system functioning thereby causing lymphocytopenia that means the decrease of lymphocytic cells neutrophilia increase in the number of neutrophils and the subsequently interrupts the antibody production because the because the less production of lymphocytes so what are the stress mitigation measures so stress mitigation measures can be done to inhibit the acute stressors like through the maintaining the optimum water quality by providing the balanced diet with high quality feed that meets the nutritional requirements of cultivable fin fish. Next, the proper biosecurity with routine sanitary measure that implies removal of debris from fish tanks and disinfection of containers, nets and other equipments timely. And the last but not the least that a farmer must adhere to the recommended stocking density. So these are the references for further reading and from where I have taken the materials. So if you have any question regarding this, you can email me or you can send me a message. Thank you very much and thank you for being with stress. Thank you. One